This is Asian Insider and I'm Nirmal Ghosh. Now you may not particularly like them, but you can't do without them. The coronavirus pandemic has made masks part of our lives. Billions of these are being used, plus other plastic-based personal protection equipment or PPE for health and hospital workers. And on top of that, more packaging in terms of food containers and so forth. And the question is, where do they go? The answer is not a pleasant one. Though many of us have tried to reduce our usage of plastic as awareness grows of what it is doing to our ecosystem, the pandemic has led to a new surge in plastic waste. If it is not quite visible, it is because a lot of it is in the ocean. Masks, gloves, gowns, medicine sachets, and soon probably even glass vials are choking the ocean. In just one drive in Rishikonda Beach in India, a local scuba team removed 21,000 kilos of plastic in just 61 dives. A huge part of that is what we could call pandemic waste. To get some detail and perspective on this very critical challenge that will be with us for a long time past the pandemic, we have today my colleague in Singapore, Straits Times climate change editor, David Fogarty. Right, so David, a lot of NGOs and academics who track this kind of pollution in oceans and on land are flagging this as a hazardous legacy of the pandemic. But tell me, are governments cognizant? Most Asian countries are notoriously short on proper waste management and disposal, even in normal times. Is there any sign of change or at least of some new urgency for change? Um, I would say most governments are very much preoccupied with dealing with the pandemic for the moment. Um, I think some governments are, are aware of the uh, amount of plastic waste being generated, um, particularly personal protection equipment or PPE, which includes masks. Um, and I think a lot of them are trying to do their best to ensure that this is collected and disposed of properly or incinerated. Um, but I, certainly from what we found in Indonesia, in India and uh, the Philippines, that um, a lot of these efforts, um, while there's a lot of genuine intent, I think they're quite patchy and they're not capturing all the waste. And that's just really just a part of a extra plastic waste that's being generated. Um, as we all know, uh, particularly during lockdowns, people order in a lot of food, a lot of takeaway, a lot of that's in um, plastic containers for food delivery, for takeout, um, because plastic is deemed to be still one of the most, particularly single-use plastics, uh, probably the most hygienic, I suppose, type of container for food. Um, and that's kind of derailed a lot of efforts globally to reduce the amount of single-use plastic. So instead, during the pandemic, uh, during the past year, we've seen a huge spike in the amount of single-use plastic, in addition to a huge amount of uh, disposable masks being used as well. Right. So a lot of people are wearing reusable cloth masks as well. There's a whole new industry in these uh, designer cloth masks. But more seriously, mm. there are a number of innovations out there as well, making disposable or biodegradable masks out of natural substances and so forth. Can you give us some examples of those? Yeah, so as you, as you mentioned, um, disposable cloth masks um, have really taken off. Um, certainly in Singapore, you see lots of shops trying to sell different versions in different designs. Um, but the, on the horizon, there are more inventive types of masks that hopefully will gain traction. So there, there are ones that are made from, in the, in the Philippines, there's a place uh, that makes them from um, uh, banana fiber, I think banana leaves, I think, um, using the fiber from that to, to make masks. Um, and they can naturally decompose in about two months. Uh, in Australia, there's a place in Queensland that's trying to make uh, masks from uh, sugarcane waste, and there's others that are made from hemp. Gradually, these, I hope, will, will certainly take off. Certainly, the cloth masks have become more prevalent, um, but they have not really totally um, displaced the huge amount of disposable plastic masks that are still being used. So um, six months ago, there was a study that came out that showed the world was using roughly 129 billion plastic disposable masks a month. Um, and there's a lot of concern as to what is happening to those masks. Some, I'd say a fair portion, end up in landfills, or in Singapore's case, they end up being incinerated. But in places, certainly in other parts in Asia, where you know, waste management systems are not as uh, well-developed, they will end up 
in landfills or disposed on the sides of the roads when they'll end up in the ocean, which is one of the key concerns of uh, conservationists. So David, a lot of people are using this surgical mask, right? Um, how much plastic is in this? So those standard blue masks weigh roughly three and a half grams. Um, and they're, I think, pretty much entirely plastic. Um, now, if you could imagine if there's 129 billion of these used you know, and presumably disposed of every month, that's, that's, that's the best estimate that seems to be around. Um, you know, if you try to figure that out in terms of total weight, that's about 451,000 tons, which is several aircraft carriers worth of plastic, which is, and that's just one month. So you can imagine, or try to imagine how much plastic that would be over the course of the year. And as we stretch into 2021, over the course you know, of two years. Um, um, and, you know, and if you were to um, consider the air era, so if you, if you were to put all those masks, lay them out you know, across end to end um, and try to figure out how much area that would be, that would be, uh, we calculated about three times the land area of Singapore, um, which, so that would be roughly 2,150, square kilometers which also would translate to something like uh that would cover 36 times the land area of manhattan island so just one month of masks you could cover manhattan 36 times it's kind of it's just a mind-boggling sort of figure absolutely so what is the usual person the layman to do in these circumstances you want to do the right thing you need to protect mm. yourself and your family right so you will need masks and you will have to throw them away so what is, what is one to do? Well, as you mentioned earlier, there's a very simple solution that a lot of people, I think, are turning to, and it's, you know, it's becoming, um, I think, quite a growing industry. In some places, a cottage in industry, but it's growing. And, and the answer is simply this. It's the disposable cloth mask. Um, the correct ones have three layers. Um, that's designed to capture um, droplets, and both from, you know, the person and but also try to prevent breathing in droplets from other people um some people uh, still try to use bandanas but authorities have shown that that doesn't that's just a single layer that that's not terribly effective so uh, the best consensus is a three-layered cloth-based mask um which are reusable um you know i don't think they've got much plastic or anything sort of nasty in them um and basically i think you know, if you <clears throat> have a number of them, you wash them regularly. Um, there's no need to, really to buy these packets of say 50 disposable masks. Um, and you know, by using reusable masks, you're, you know, you're saving, I guess, money in the end, but also, you know, saving the environment. So one of the fallouts which you mentioned just two, uh, seconds ago is of the pandemic has been the return of plastic packaging, especially for food. And of course, we know plastic is unfortunately very cheap to produce. And so this mm. has become a ubiquitous part of our lives. And it's come at you know precisely the moment when we didn't need it really because plastic is overwhelming the planet. How bad is that particular aspect of the pandemic? Well, we're still trying to figure that out and certainly scientists and conservationists are still trying to figure that out. Um, um, I recently interviewed a, a quite a well-known, world-renowned, I guess, plastic uh, waste specialist um, in, uh, based in Australia. And her view was, instinctively, you would think that um, the pandemic has been extremely bad for uh, the, you know, the threat from plastic pollution because of the surge in single-use plastic use and the surge in um, disposable mask use as well. But as yet, we just don't have enough data from pre-pandemic to, you know, to now. Um, some organizations, including Ocean Conservancy, have uh, run these international coastal cleanups. Um, and there's early data showing um, that there's been a significant jump in PPE waste turning up in, in these monthly cleanups. But as yet, we still don't have a, a very clear picture as to just how bad it will be. It will take time. So probably sometime this year, I think we'll get clearer figures. Um, but as you say, this problem will last much longer than the pandemic. Um, you know, these plastic um, PPE waste, uh, disposable plastic from 
single use, um, uh, you know, food items or food packaging, masks, these will be around potentially for decades. And uh, what is interesting, I find, of course, from travels in Asia and, you know, our work in Asia is that, as you said, a lot of this kind of waste, medical waste, plastic waste, all kinds of things is actually just dumped on the roadside. In some cases, I've seen it in the mountains in India where it's dumped on the roadside and then the monsoon flushes it down and the river's taken to the sea. But does this, is there a hazard in terms of transferring the virus itself? Um, spreading it by disposable or uh, by disposing of medical waste. I mean, we've seen that the virus, for example, can jump into wild animal species and go, go back and forth. So that should, would be a concern as well, right? I, I would imagine so. I, I'm not sure what the, the latest sort of science is on that, but certainly when it comes to masks, nobody wants to pick those up if they're on the side of the road, right? Because it's been covering someone's face. So, um, while somebody might want to pick up a, a candy wrapper or a, you know, a plastic water bottle, nobody will really want to pick up a disposable mask. And this is part of the problem too, because um, some people have suggested that, well, if they're made out of plastic, why not recycle them? And there is a company in France that uh, has started trying to do that. But there are a couple of problems with this. Um, and that is, um, first of all, you have to get people to be willing to, you know, dispose them dispose of them in a central place where you can collect them, um, then have proper handling facilities so, so you don't spread the virus to, to the handlers. Um, and second of all, you know, they have the, you have the ear loops, um, which are an entanglement risk for, for wildlife. So you have to remove those. Um, and, you know, and, and if you're dealing with the N95 mask, then you've got you know, the metal nose clips and the, uh, the, you know, the rubber or you know, elastic uh, ear loops. So it becomes a very difficult thing, difficult process to sort of try to recycle them. Um, and this is, so this has led to some experts to say, look, for the moment, the best thing to do is just to cut off the ear loops and bin your masks, because unless authorities or unless companies come up with, you know, a very simple and effective and safe way of disposing these masks, um, the best thing is to do is just um, either put them in the landfills or preferably to incinerate them. But I'm glad uh, you and our colleagues are doing a, a special feature on, on this because it is somewhat uh, neglected. I haven't, I've only read snippets here and there about this issue, but obviously it's, it's, it's a huge issue and it's going to um, outlive the pandemic, uh, assuming the pandemic comes to some sort of end mm -hmm. with the vaccines and so forth. But do you anticipate also more medical waste in terms of glass vials, syringes, and whatnot? Yeah, so, yeah, so that's, that's, that's been mentioned as the next wave of waste, you know, these billions of tiny glass vials for um, containing the vaccine, and then also the, uh, the billions of the plastic syringes. Now, some countries will definitely dispose of those carefully, but unfortunately, there'll be some countries um, where that won't quite be the case. So I'm, I'm hoping that won't become the next sort of plastic pandemic, um, but I suspect that'll probably be the, the next chapter in the story. Plastic pandemic, that's a good phrase. David Fogarty, thank you very much for these insights today. So the global effort to reduce single-use plastic has been utterly derailed by the pandemic. And one, one way forward is for everyone to use cloth masks, but it is very important that they should be approved masks. They should have three layers and do an adequate job in terms of protection. For Asian Insider, I'm Nirbal Ghosh.